It has been said that the greatest lessons of life, the greatest innovations that man has brought forth throughout history, the greatest triumphs of the human spirit, were all born during the most difficult, uncertain, and challenging of times, when man and the institutions he created faced the greatest hardships. Abraham Lincoln reunited us as a nation with a four-minute speech delivered in the midst of the most destructive war in our history. Martin Luther King brought us together as a people across a social divide that long threatened the very fabric and ideals for which our nation stood. The examples abound throughout the whole sweep of American history. To be sure, during the early years of this 21st century, America has faced unprecedented trials and tribulations, from threats to our very security as a free country to a worldwide economic collapse that toppled icons of our free enterprise system. But as President John Kennedy said, in a crisis, beware of the danger, but don't fail to recognize the opportunity. For he knew that the ashes of destruction gave birth to new life, that embedded in the American spirit was the unique ability to embrace change, to innovate and experiment, to adapt and rebuild something even greater and more dynamic. Nowhere have Kennedy's words proven more true than within the American automobile industry. The economic chaos that began in October 2008 was indeed a perfect storm for the automobile business. The industry itself experienced more than a recession. Sales of automobiles plummeted to levels not seen since the Great Depression. Unprecedented bankruptcies, massive layoffs, and unemployment rippled through thousands of suppliers and related industries across the country. But one American automobile company seized the opportunity and used it to completely reinvent itself and its products for the 21st century. And today, as a result, the skies are clearing over the Ford Motor Company. In any business, uh, just as in, in personal life, there are going to be periods of crisis. And the, the tendency for people is to want to run to the back of the cave, uh, curl up in the fetal position, and say, wake me when the sun comes up. Uh, well, uh, that's wrong. And when you have a crisis, as we have seen in this industry, I, I think it enables people to really focus and do big things, and, and that's what's happened. And I, I, I credit the leadership of Ford of, uh, of really embracing this as a time of opportunity rather than a time to hide. Americans love to see somebody who pulled him or herself up by their own bootstraps. They like to see somebody who fought against the odds and won, and they especially do not like People are companies that have got to run to the government to say, please help me because I'm in trouble. The fact that Ford did not take any government money absolutely created a new dynamic in the way that Ford is perceived by the American public. Having said that, it's got great cars, it's got quality that now by several standards exceeds that of Toyota and Honda. So it's not just the fact that they, they did not take government money, it's the fact that they did that and had great product with great quality. You know, this has been a wonderful opportunity over the past three or four years to kind of look ourselves in the mirror and challenge ourselves and say, hey, listen, you know, how do we look at the world differently through the eyes of our consumer and change the business? And obviously, you know, given the tough economic environment, it was a great backdrop to give us permission to really reinvent the company. This is clearly a very exciting time for Ford. Um, because of the actions we've taken, because we all pull together around a compelling vision, a very comprehensive strategy, and we've been relentlessly implementing this plan to make the best cars and trucks in the world, that we now are in a position now, we have the foundation, we have the tools, we have the experience now to create an exciting, viable, profitably growing company that's gonna provide so many opportunities for so many people around the world. And that's a very exciting future. This is an all-American story of which all Americans should be proud. It is a story born in the century-old words of its founder, Henry Ford, who after overcoming all the odds, after many failures and false starts, 
prophetically stated that when everything seems to be going against you, remember always that the airplane takes off against the wind, not with it. Today, the new pioneers at the Ford Motor Company have again defied the odds, and going it alone, in the midst of an unprecedented economic crisis, have completed an historic turnaround. With the passion, perseverance, imagination, and entrepreneurial spirit of the company's remarkable founder, they are today re-establishing American automotive leadership and reinventing the wheels of the world. If you look at the journey we've been on, really, in the last four or five years, I mean, it was a it was a white knuckle ride. And uh, I, but I've never been so proud of our employees. The way that they uh, pulled together and said, "We've we've got to make this company successful because the alternative is unacceptable." And you know, we did it without federal money. Uh, we charted our own course. We put the plan together, and then the plan worked. Well, you know, it was scary there for a while, where it, it looked pretty bad, and we didn't know if. Uh, Ford was going to make it, GM and Chrysler were having their problems, and uh, I think with the management that we have here at Ford, uh, starting with Mr. Mullally on down, they did a fantastic job, and it, you know I'm excited to come to work every day. I think one of the major drivers is the fact that Ford has questioned everything. Ford has said, what do we need to do to reinvent ourselves? What do we need to do to reinvent the industry? And so the way they were able to look at, and the way that the Ford team was able to look at, how do we do the future of the car industry better than we've done in the past. What we really had to decide together was what was our vision for Ford. And it's interesting because we found a lot of inspiration uh, with Henry Ford and his original vision for Ford. And I'll never forget uh, the first time I saw an advertisement that he took out on January 24th of 1925 in the uh, Saturday Evening Post. And the headline was, uh, opening the highways to all mankind. Opening the highways to all mankind. He wanted to bring safe and efficient transportation to everybody and also have an enterprise that they could actually work at Ford and have a great career, uh, great jobs, and actually afford the Ford vehicles. With that fundamental foundation of serving the people of the world with the finest cars and trucks in the world is where we really pull together to create this, this, new, this new Ford. When Henry Ford started the Ford Motor Company in the early years of the 20th century, he had a vision for America. He was convinced that the motor car could be the catalyst for not only developing the United States into an economic powerhouse, but if this new invention could be manufactured efficiently, it would provide American families with a quality of life and level of freedom unprecedented in the history of the world. He was myopically focused on ensuring that the automobile would not merely be a rich man's toy, but rather a machine that could benefit the lives of every man, woman, and child in the country. He insisted also that affordable cars for the masses would not be stripped down, cheap versions of the rich man's car, but that every vehicle would be excellent, no matter who was driving it. He knew that if he focused his resources, never losing sight of that goal, he could build a company that would provide a car for virtually every American family that was of the highest quality, was affordable, and incorporated the latest technology available. A hundred years later, that vision, that focus, 
and that spirit of innovation is today driving every aspect of the new Ford Motor Company. Well, I think that maybe what all of us feel um, so good about is that we are actually accelerating the implementation of Henry Ford's original vision. Because Henry really, he wanted to open the highways to all mankind. He wanted to create not only great products, but also a strong, a sustainable business. And he also wanted to contribute to a better world. Again, just coming back to the Ford brand and the values of that brand have been continuous. And it really was about exceptional value combined with product excellence and doing that for all markets globally. And in some sense, that's exactly, that was Henry Ford's vision. And that's the same vision we're fulfilling today. When you think about the unconventional thinking that Ford used today, I think the question uh, that Ford has imposed on themselves lately has been not why, but rather why not. So what do we do to really make sure that we become the car company of the future? To answer that question, especially in the midst of the recent economic depression in the world automotive market, the new team at Ford went back and literally questioned everything about their business, their products, their processes, and indeed their long-term mission. It was a period of unprecedented soul searching where they honestly looked at what they and the automobile industry had become, what the real needs and desires of consumers today are and would be in the decades ahead, how they could contribute responsibly and environmentally to the resource-constrained world of the 21st century, and indeed how Ford as an institution could make a real difference in the world. To do that would require tough decisions and guts, streamlining the company into one worldwide enterprise, simplifying processes, an honest look at products of the future, consolidating brands where necessary, massive investments in new technologies, all requiring a sea change in the conventional automotive culture and thinking, all resulting in a new vision for transportation in the 21st century. A vision and plan based on one company, one Ford worldwide, totally focused on building and delivering the very best vehicles, whether cars, crossovers, or trucks, in the world. Every product, in every segment, in every market, to every customer. And every one of those vehicles, from the smallest to the most luxurious, would here forward be uncompromising in terms of providing stunning design, quality and reliability unsurpassed by anyone in the world, an unmatched array of the most advanced technology to enhance the driving experience and safety, new engines and powertrains for outstanding driving dynamics and world-class fuel efficiency, and affordability and value for the changing world. And despite the economy and the winds of the perfect storm, that is precisely the plan that the new pioneers at Ford have put into place over the last four years. The results have been nothing short of remarkable with each successive new vehicle launch worldwide and here in America. Well, every new vehicle is so exciting anyway because it really represents a point of view about the future and especially about what the consumers really want and value. And in Ford's case, I mean, we just have this fantastic family of vehicles now, whether it's a small, medium, or large, a car utility truck, every one of them being best in class and quality and fuel efficiency and safety and really smart design, but have the vehicles that people really do want and value. There's no question that Ford is rethinking the kind of products that it's got to bring to the market. But here's the big difference. It's not so much Ford rethinking these products. It's that it's finally investing in the product like it never has before. The product that we have coming, uh, quite frankly, is some of the best that I've ever seen. The new Fiesta that we have in our showrooms today, it's just an amazing product. It's totally revolutionary for Ford Motor Company to be able to build a car that's priced competitively, but also is superior in the content, the way it feels, the way it handles. The new Explorer is just amazing. It is as revolutionary to that market as it was when Ford really invented the market decades ago with the first Explorer. 
And then of course the new Focus, uh, it's really like driving a luxury sports sedan rather than driving an economical car. It's just a, gonna be a great car for all of us. So I think the product that we have coming uh, really is just a, it's a result of tremendous leadership and a commitment to quality. There, were, there was a, a great meeting we were having. We were having a, a product committee meeting and that's where we talk about our future products. And we were having a discussion around a certain product and the discussion around, was around how do we make our next generation product in that segment competitive. And we all kind of looked around each other and we said, you know what? As opposed to just saying being competitive, it's got to be about product excellence. And that changes your whole mindset in terms of how you approach things. And that was a little bit of the aha moment for all of us saying, you know what? To get folks out of you know, their Toyotas and Hondas or whatever and get them into Fords, we are going to be better. The entire rebirth of the Ford Motor Company hinged on one important premise, to question everything, from their internal processes, to market positioning, to production methods. And most importantly, they questioned everything related to their products. And they started right at home with the family car. Ford designers and engineers questioned the long-held approach of automakers that the family sedan had to be first and foremost utilitarian, conservative in nature, traditional in style, adequate in performance. In 2010, Ford dramatically broke the industry-wide cycle of conventional, boring family cars with the introduction of a radical new flagship, the Taurus. Highly acclaimed in the automotive press, Taurus was a family car that excited the senses in every respect, from its bold, aggressive styling to its room, comfort, and unmatched level of high technology features. For the first time, the family sedan would be built around sporty performance and driving dynamics and would feature a new level of fuel efficiency through the revolutionary EcoBoost engine all the while maintaining the value that's true to the Ford tradition. Taurus was able to jump into a direction that it had never been before. So you've got V8 power and zero to 60 speeds that beat a lot of the big V8s with uh, V6 fuel economy. You've got uh, radars that look 360 degrees around the car, forward-looking radars for adaptive cruise control and the ease and comfort of collision warning. You've got side-looking radars that can make you safe when you're backing out of a, a, a parking lot situation, uh, let you know if somebody's in your blind spot. And the feedback I'm getting now that it's on the road is, thank you for the features. They're just wonderful. I can't go back. I feel like this car takes care of me. And Taurus really is uh, an, an announcement that says, you're seeing it here on the Taurus first, but it's coming all the way across the car lineup. So if you go to our showrooms today, we have a fantastic lineup. And what I can say is, looking at this car, looking at the future, it's only going to get better. While the new Taurus had the automotive world and family car buyers buzzing, Ford engineers were preparing to take the wraps off another groundbreaking vehicle, which addressed head on the question, do SUVs, which are so important to the lifestyles of so many active American families, have to be fuel inefficient, wasteful, and so counter to America's constrained energy resources and environmental imperatives. And today, Ford is answering that question with the introduction of the new 2011 Explorer. We call it the reinvention of the sport utility vehicle for the 21st century. And the operative word there was reinvention to take a, a sport utility vehicle that's been an iconic nameplate for us and continue to deliver that great functionality and exceptional fuel economy. You know, SUVs, uh, uh, we're getting a bit of a, a bad rap. You know, these big gas guzzler uh, vehicles in a time when you know, fuel, econ uh, fuel economy is more important to consumers. And we really challenge ourselves and say, how do we reinvent the SUV for the 21st century? without compromising what customers really want. They want the off-road capability, they want the functionality, they want it in a great design, but how do we give them that fuel economy? And I'm not talking, you know, a mile per gallon better. How do we give 20, 25, 30% better fuel economy? From the ground up, the new Explorer is different. 
Built side by side with the Taurus and the Lincoln MKS vehicles, the Explorer combines car-like handling with SUV capability. The new Explorer is considered by many to be one of the most beautiful SUVs ever created, inside and out. It contains features usually reserved only for the highest-end luxury cars, like intelligent four-wheel drive with the terrain management system, allowing the driver to seamlessly control how the vehicle's engine, transmission, four-wheel drive, and stability control systems respond to the demands of terrain, whether it be snow, sand, or mud. And for maximum fuel efficiency, there's a 3.5-liter V6, with 25% better fuel economy than its predecessor. To satisfy the engineers at Ford, the completely redesigned Explorer was subjected to the most rigorous battery of tests in some of the most extreme conditions anywhere in the world. The all-new terrain management system was tested in the fine-grained, white-hot sand of Dubai, where midday temperatures can reach 125 degrees. The tests allowed Ford engineers the chance to fine-tune vehicle performance in extreme conditions to deliver the best possible product to every Explorer customer worldwide. Uh, it used to be when you had to make a decision as a customer, if you wanted great fuel economy, it meant you had to give up something. You had to either give up space, you had to give up uh, creature comforts, you had to give up uh, features in your car. And until recently, that was the trade-off the customer had to make. They don't have to make those trade-offs anymore. They can have it all in terms of fun to drive, great features, and great performance, along with great fuel economy. Perhaps the biggest challenge to conventional wisdom that Ford's worldwide designers and engineers took on was the traditional perception that small cars mean cheap, utilitarian transportation. That inexpensive small cars, by definition, mean compromising on performance, handling, and the advanced technology and features that enhance safety, comfort, and the driving experience. And in fact, the idea that small cars are just no fun. Part of the core DNA of the new Ford is to challenge those assumptions um, in the name of our customer uh, because they want something new and they'll reward companies who bring new ideas to market. We used to have this saying, you know, our small cars needed to be cheap and cheerful. And we said, that doesn't work in this market. We need to make them desirable. We want to make sure that people walk into our showrooms and they want to buy a small car, not that they have to buy a small car. Ford knew that solving this dilemma was critical to re-establishing genuine leadership in the world automotive marketplace of the 21st century. This was where the strategy of one Ford had to come alive. And so it did with the introduction in North America of the 2011 Ford Fiesta. Launched in Europe to rave reviews from owners across the continent, Fiesta redefined the subcompact segment with its 40 mile per gallon highway fuel efficiency, which is the best among the competition, coupled with some of the best technology in the industry. Technology that rivals some of the most expensive luxury brands in the world. People who drive it around get stopped on the street each and every day, uh, asked to, you know, what is this? And it really is surprising and different from Ford. So the reception's just been outstanding. We have found for the first time that we we're able to compete in a segment, the small car segment, uh, where we couldn't really compete before. It's really got technology, safety, uh, fuel economy, all the things that people want in a car, and yet it's in a small car uh, that they can park easily, get around in the city easy, uh, and have good gas mileage. 60% of the people buying a Fiesta are new to the Ford brand. The whole idea is people want our products. The vision Alan had and it's really interesting because the plan on the surface looks very simple, but he used the word want. We, we want to produce and develop vehicles that people want. That's the key word. Um, and now people see the genius in Fiesta. 
But Fiesta was just the beginning of the small car revolution. In 2011, Ford introduced into the market a vehicle destined to join the ranks of the world's great automobiles. One of the truly groundbreaking cars in automotive history. A car that changes the game, that redefines public perceptions of what it should be or must be. And while this car was developed by some of the best designers and engineers from the world over, they were all working together for one great American company, the Ford Motor Company. Their goal was to challenge all the assumptions of decades of automaking. It was to design a car that made sense for the 21st century, and yet at the same time was exciting to look at and just plain fun to drive. A car that was affordable for the whole world, yet was equipped with a dizzying array of state-of-the-art technology and features. A car small in size, but with unexpected room, comfort, and safety features that exceeded the highest standards. A car that surprises by combining world-class fuel economy with performance and driving dynamics that stir the senses. Their goal was to craft a true world car. And that's precisely what they did. And they called it the Ford Focus. The new Focus is, well, let me put it this way, for Americans who think they know what the Focus is, you don't know what the Focus is at all in terms of the new one that's coming. It's absolutely a European type car. The styling, the driving dynamics of it, the interior appointments, it is a dramatic transformation as to what Ford's been offering in that segment. I think it's going to knock people out when they see that the Ford Motor Company is putting as high a quality car as the Focus on the streets. It's just going to cement this, this growing impression that Ford's really on the right track. Its kinetic design, its striking front end, sleek profile, and dramatic athletic stance is matched inside with a meticulous cockpit-styled interior, providing a whole new level of space and comfort and an array of features and technology unmatched in the marketplace. And in the months and years ahead, Ford will introduce a revolutionary new full battery electric Focus with a 100 mile range, plus a hybrid Focus and a plug-in hybrid Focus. The vehicle is just outstanding. And, and when you actually get inside the vehicle, it has unparalleled craftsmanship. It has premium materials throughout the interior. It's really all designed around the driver and it's just a wonderful driving experience. Importantly, the new Focus World Car is being built right here in the United States, within just a few miles of where Henry Ford started it all. The greatest example of one Ford coming to life for our customers is uh, the new uh, Focus for so many reasons. Built here in Michigan, small car, returning home, world-class standard. My Ford Touch, we launched first in Edge and Explore, and people are excited. But the next car we're launching it on is Focus. The driving feel, I had never driven a front-wheel drive car that you could toss around like that. The balance, the steering feel, so precise. That kind of fun to drive, we haven't had at Ford in the US. Uh, Fiesta started it, but Focus takes it to a whole nother level. The Focus is literally the best of everything at Ford. The fun to drive from Europe and the design, the technology from the US, the fuel efficiency that's better than the Japanese, all built here in Michigan. We are uh, fighting for the soul of manufacturing of the United States right now. It wasn't very long ago where people didn't think the United States could compete worldwide. And there's no reason that if you make the products that people really do want and value and you do it more productively, that you can't compete in the best in the world. And we're actually converting a truck plant to a car plant and we're making the new focus right here in Michigan in the United States with U.S. citizens and we're competing with the best in the world and we're doing it profitably so that we can profitably grow the business for the good of all of us. Detroit is uh, a city with a lot of challenges. It's known throughout the world for all its problems, but it's, it's very rewarding to see 
the Ford Motor Company sticking to its roots, sticking to where it came from, investing in its facilities, bringing in some of the best minds in science and technology and engineering and marketing and whatever else is involved in the automobile from all over the world, bringing it to its home where it all started. And it's great to see the company not giving up on where its roots are from and continuing to fight to make it a good place again. And I think that, that shows a great deal of confidence uh, the company has in us and the UAW workforce that we have here. You look at the talent we have here, you look at the track record, the history and the heritage of building great vehicles right here you know, in, in the Motor City. And there's a lot of pride in, in being a Ford employee. We're making a difference here. I mean, literally, if you look at what our vision is a Ford Motor Company, we're living it and we're executing it right here. It has been said that the more things change, the more they stay the same, that there's nothing new under the sun. Within the revolution that has taken place at the Ford Motor Company, a revolution filled with new ideas, new products, and a new excitement about the future, an element of this history repeating itself can be found. For in the process of reinventing itself, the Ford Motor Company has in many ways returned to its roots to the wisdom of its founder, affectionately referred to as the old man. Henry Ford was at once simple and complex, a living, breathing paradox whose efforts literally redesigned the modern world. But above all else, he was a man who understood his business and his mission. He spoke about big things with little words offering common sense nuggets like, you can't build a reputation on what you're going to do. Whether you think you can, or whether you think you can't, you're right. As the modern Ford Motor Company faced the challenges of an economic hurricane and a declining business model, the soul searching they did led to a whole new array of products and processes and technologies. And surprisingly, to a whole array of values that were there from the very beginning. Early on, Henry Ford clearly laid out the mission for his car company. He said, I will build a motor car for the great multitude, constructed of the best materials, by the best men to be hired, after the simplest designs that modern engineering can devise. He said he will make these cars available so low in price that no man making a good salary will be unable to own one and enjoy with his family the blessings in God's great open spaces. At one point, Henry Ford said, it has always been our belief that a sale does not complete the transaction between us and the buyer, but establishes a new obligation on us to see that that car gives good service. And another, he said, quality means doing it right when no one is looking. Today, the new pioneers call these values the four pillars. Drive quality, drive green, drive smart, and drive safe. And they're at the heart of everything Ford is doing and will do throughout the 21st century. Of all the questions that Ford has asked itself, none was of greater importance than how to establish a new level of quality and reliability, an issue of vital importance to Henry Ford a hundred years earlier, and one that is foundational to building a world-class global enterprise in the 21st century. Compounding the problem, of course, was the broadly held public perception that an American automaker, no matter who they were, could not match let alone exceed the quality and reliability levels of the import manufacturers. From the very beginning, Ford attacked this issue on a worldwide scale, in every stage of vehicle development, 
From initial concept through design, engineering, purchasing, manufacturing, and service. And the results have been stunning. Perception of a quality lag has disappeared. And when you see the data, for example, with Ford now leading uh, the industry in quality, uh, that's something that really resonates, I think, with people, particularly at a time when there's so much more interest in value because of the still uh, difficulty we're seeing in this uh, recession period. People are looking for value. When you look at uh, some of the independent studies that are available out there, Consumer Reports, J.D. Powers, there's some other ones that are out there as well, they all show that Ford has absolutely caught up to Toyota and Honda, and depending on which model you're talking about, they're better. So for example, all the data shows that the Ford Fusion is now a higher quality car than the Toyota Camry or the Honda Accord, which is an astonishing statement. Ford's commitment to the environment began long before any of the world's automobile companies even came into existence. Henry Ford, besides being an industrialist, was a committed conservationist, devoted to finding ways to both protect and nurture the environment, as well as harness nature itself as a clean and efficient energy source. From the earliest uses of zero emission hydroelectric power to recycling factory waste to reduce the fossil fuel burden on the public, to experimentation with alternative fuels, Henry Ford's early pioneering led to breakthrough after breakthrough throughout the 20th century and an environmental consciousness at the Ford Motor Company that long preceded our present day concern for the environment. I think the original Henry Ford would be very proud of his company today. Ford is really starting to carve out an environmental image for itself. Bill Ford Jr., you know, the great-grandson of the original Henry Ford, is probably just as much of an environmentalist as his great-grandfather was. And Henry Ford I definitely was an environmentalist. He did not like to see anything in nature go to waste. Little known fact, for example, when Ford was building the Model T back in those days, much of the body of the car was supported by a wooden structure. So he instructed his suppliers on how they should construct their shipping crates for sending parts to the company. He would then take those crates, very carefully break them apart, and use them in making those Model Ts. He didn't want to see anything go to waste. Henry Ford believed early on that the internal combustion engine would someday be a thing of the past. That in fact, the primary energy source for the motor vehicle of the future would be electricity. While his prophecy is yet to be realized, there is to be sure an electrification revolution taking place at Ford Laboratories throughout the world. You know, I think if, if uh, we had the benefit of Henry Ford today to swing by the lab and, and see what we're doing with electrified vehicles, I think he'd be really, really proud of the Ford Motor Company and hopefully its people. Ford's electrification strategy is quite different from other manufacturers. As opposed to offering one hybrid or fully electric model and forcing customers to compromise in size, style, or features, Ford is delivering a whole family of electrified vehicles that affordably provide customers with significant fuel economy improvements and reduce CO2 emissions without compromising style, space, or the driving experience. Uh, we've got our hybrids, our plug-in hybrids, and our full battery electrics. And, and fundamental to Ford is not creating these as niche one-off product, but they are a core part of our product portfolio. They're a core part of our planning, our product cycle plan, and it's really delivering that functionality in a way that's affordable for the masses. One of the many challenges within the automobile industry is how to introduce cutting edge technology across a broad spectrum of products, including cars, trucks, and crossovers. I think Henry Ford would be very proud of, of the company's accomplishments and the vision the company has for, for democratizing technology, for giving customers EcoBoost and Sync. I mean, technologies that were only available to very rich people in luxury brands. 
Ford has studied consumer electronic trends for years and has invented the MyFord Touch System, which allows drivers to manage information from inside their vehicle and importantly, deliver it through steering wheel controls, sensitive touch screen, and voice activation. MyFord Touch allows the driver to control the navigation, phone, climate conditions, and audio and video entertainment functions while keeping their hands on the wheel and eyes on the road. The result is a signature Ford interior experience that provides a smarter, safer, and simpler system to connect drivers with in-car technologies and their digital lives like never before. And this technology is not merely for entertainment and excitement. The new Ford vehicles are packed with innovations designed to make the road safer for everyone. Today, Ford has more top U.S. safety ratings than any manufacturer ever. This includes more top safety picks from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety and more five-star crash test ratings from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration than any other manufacturer in 30 years of government testing. Ford pioneered a new advanced radar-based driver warning system to help drivers avoid sudden, unexpected hazards. Collision warning with brake support can detect vehicles directly ahead. When a danger of a collision is identified, the system warns the driver with an audible and visual warning projected on the front windshield. The moment the driver lifts off the gas pedal, the brake system automatically employs a low level of braking and pre-charges the brakes for maximum performance once they are engaged. Ford Technology delivers 360 degrees of vehicle safety with their blind spot information system with cross traffic alert, which uses two multiple beam radars in each of the rear quarter panels. Whether on the road or backing out of a parking space, the system monitors the blind spots and alerts the driver when a vehicle is nearby and their commitment to intelligent vehicles and vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications is breaking new ground in the development of the technology of tomorrow. Already, there are prototypes testing the next frontier of collision avoidance that could revolutionize the driving experience. Well, one of the really, really special things uh, about our new Ford is how we have really focused uh, on the consumer and have a complete family of vehicles, small, medium, and large. And also knowing that every vehicle is gonna be best in class in things that I care about and I value, like quality, fuel efficiency, safety, really smart design like Sync and My Ford. So, you know, clearly by focusing on the Ford brand, we have unleashed all the capability and all the power of Ford worldwide to bring the best cars and trucks in the world to the consumer. The story of Ford in these early years of the 21st century is in many ways every bit as remarkable and historic as the story of the founding of Ford at the beginning of the 20th century. It's far more than a story of a one-time corporate turnaround. For it is one thing to rescue a troubled company in a troubled industry and return it to profitability. But to turn a company around, reinvent the very way it does business, build a consistent, sustainable, world-class enterprise, and literally redefine its products and industry is really something very special. And to do it in the midst of unprecedented worldwide economic turmoil makes the story even more remarkable. Many said it couldn't be done. Most of the smart money in America bet against it. There was widespread sentiment across the nation that the American automobile industry was a dying institution, incapable of competing on a world stage in good times, let alone during a debilitating depression, and certainly not without massive government intervention. To be sure, all the odds were against it. So too, a hundred years earlier, all the odds were against the man who built the company in the first place. 
Most of the smart money bet against Henry Ford and his vision of opening the highways to all mankind, of raising the standard of living and quality of life for all Americans, of freeing American families to see and discover this great land of opportunity. They said it couldn't be done, building a quality, affordable car for the masses, inventing an actual assembly line that would revolutionize the manufacturing process, paying an unheard of $5 a day wage so the very families making the cars could afford to own one themselves, or bringing together workers of every creed and color from all across America. But Henry Ford did it, and in doing so, shaped and defined 20th century America. Today, following his legacy, the men and women of the Ford Motor Company are poised to again lead the world automotive industry with an exciting new vision for transportation in this, the 21st century. Importantly, the people of Ford, the men and women behind this remarkable resurgence, see this as a grand mission. A mission built around an unprecedented coalition of workers and employees throughout the world. Hundreds of suppliers and thousands of loyal dealers carrying the Ford banner across America all energized and committed like never before. A coalition of individuals from the top down that actually care about things like contributing to a changing world, leaving a legacy for future generations, helping to improve the quality of life in communities across America and around the world. There is indeed a new beat in the step of the men and women of this great American company a new energy and excitement that permeates the culture of Ford and is based on the simple realization that something very special is happening there. You know, Ford has been through a lot over the last uh, four years and we have not only survived, but we have transitioned now to a sustainable, exciting, profitably growing company with a laser focus on making the vehicles that people really do want and value and absolutely enjoy. The, the excitement is there within the company, within my organization, within the supply base. Everyone is energized. I mean, we're a company of greatness. We have a history of greatness. And even back when I joined the company, we knew we were a company of greatness. We were finding our way. And finally, the formula has come together. We've gotten our traction, and we're moving forward. Now, that being said, we've got a lot of work yet to do, and we recognize that but certainly we're seeing the fruits of the labors that we've invested over the past few years. This is, this is a whole new company. Just to be able to be a part of this, the transformation the way it was, you know, to the way it is right now is just, you know, it's, it's rewarding to me. Well, you know, my family has been in the Ford business for a hundred years. My great-grandfather started selling Ford Model T's from his hardware store in Texas. And so I think that, you know, I'm the fourth generation of my family, and so I've had the opportunity to see what Ford has become over time. And I would tell you that there was never more of a time than now for me to be proud to be part of Ford Motor Company. I think for my family and I, uh, this has been a really rewarding journey. Scary at times. And maybe that's why it's so rewarding. But I have to say that when I come into work, it is fun to see because the people at Ford deserve this. The dealers deserve the opportunity to sell the product that we're now making. The quality team deserve the opportunity to show what they really have. Our engineers deserve the opportunity to prove to the world that we can be as competitive here in the U.S. manufacturing small cars in the U.S. as anyone in the world. And I think the payoff for the customer is gonna be even greater. I can't wait to see what they think of the new Explorer, the new Focus in the showroom, and I really can't wait to show them what's next. At Ford, they didn't just turn around a great American company. They're establishing a 21st century model of a corporation that knows why it's here, that knows how to behave, that knows how to treat its people and their customers. It is a company on a mission a company that is reinventing the wheels of the world.